When we've looked at the bipolar transistor before, we usually considered it as being either off or being on. In other words, it's either in the cutoff mode or it's in the forward active mode or perhaps saturation. In this video, we're going to look at that transition between cutoff and the forward active mode to see why the bipolar transistor can make such a good amplifier. Let's hook a voltage source up to the base of an NPN bipolar transistor and let's monitor the base current that comes out of that source as I gradually increase it. Let's start off with a floating collector. Now if I float the collector, it means that there's not going to ever be any current going down through the collector. We're only looking at the base current here. At very low voltages of VBE, we have almost no current flowing through the base. That's exactly what I expect here because an NPN transistor has a little PN junction built into it. That's just a diode and we expect the turn on voltage for a silicon diode to be something around 0.7 volts. That's exactly what we see here in our diagram. We see a turn on voltage at about 0.7 volts. It's basically being used as a diode. We're not taking advantage of the transistor here. We're just noticing that the IV characteristic is probably exponential and that's what we expect for a PN junction. What happens if we put a voltage up here at the collector, say three volts or 30 volts, will more or less base current flow. And it turns out that for a given VBE, we're going to have less base current flowing. What I'd like you to notice from this graph though, is that the curves for three volts and 30 volts are very similar to one another. In other words, if we put a voltage up at the collector, it doesn't have a huge influence on the amount of current that's flowing through the base. That's one of the reasons why we can use a transistor as an amplifier. It kind of behaves like a current source that's a little bit immune to voltages at the collector side. Let's now see what happens to the collector current as we change the base emitter voltage in the same way. We have three different curves plotted here. Floating is very obvious and the curves for three volts and 30 volts are so close to one another that I'm not labeling them here. If the collector is floating, then we're never going to have any current going through it. But I think that what's very interesting about this plot is that three volt and 30 volt curves almost overlap each other. If we imagine a small signal on the base, then the base emitter voltage will change a little bit with that signal. As we can see from the steepness of the curve in the plot, a tiny signal will result in a large change in the collector current. And moreover, that change in collector current is mostly immune from changes in the collector voltage. This is why bipolar transistors make such good amplifiers and why transistor designs can be so robust. Pretty much all silicon bipolar transistors have plots that look very similar to this one. If we zoom in on that graph just a little bit, we can see the separation between the three volt and the 30 volt curves. Notice here that on my X axis, I'm only plotting between 0.6 volts and 1.1 volts. We still see down here roughly a 0.7 volt turn on voltage for the diode or a 0.7 volt threshold. That's true whether the collector is at 30 volts or whether it's down at three volts. By the time the base emitter voltage gets to about 0.8 volts or so, we can basically say that the transistor is fully on. If it's a non-silicon transistor, then you can have other types of threshold voltages. For example, in a germanium transistor, that threshold happens at about 0.3 volts rather than about 0.7 volts. But for all silicon transistors, you can expect a turn on voltage somewhere in the neighborhood of 0.7 volts. Let's take a look at the data sheet for a typical NPN bipolar transistor. And in this case, it's the 2N2222 transistor. It's a really common signal amplifier transistor. What I'd like to draw your attention to on the data sheet is the plot over here of base emitter voltage versus collector current. It's basically the same plot that I just showed you. The only difference is how they've plotted it here in the data sheet. Take note that they've used a log scale here on the Y axis. On the X axis, we have a linear scale that goes roughly between 0.4567 volts. So over the range of about 0.1 or 0.2 volts, we have orders of magnitude differences in the amount of collector current that's flowing. What we see then is that over very tiny changes in the base emitter voltage, 
the collector current is nearly impervious to it. The transistor functions really well as current source. In this plot, they've held the collector voltage constant at 10. So all of the variation here from one curve to another is due to differences in temperature. All of the curves are nearly vertical, which is again why the bipolar transistor can make such good amplifiers.